Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons & Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarsen Zero, and today I'm joined by Longfish, Azure Wolf, Blind Oracle, and Drain Rex. Together we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons & Dragons. This is the sixth and final encounter on the Mountain of a White Dragon, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, abilities, spells, items in hand, trained. The fighter has 125 hit points, and they're plus two axe. Blind Oracle. 139 out of 139 hit points, holding the plus one short bow, back to using plus one arrows, and having the instrument of the bards on my back. And you are currently flying because fly is left over from the previous encounter. Asia Wolf. 112 out of 112 hit points. Concentrating on flying. One of the war mages in my hand. Two first level slots. One second level slot. Two third level slots. And one fifth level slot are all that remains in my arsenal. Longfish. Currently at 137 hit points. Holding a warhammer and shield plus two. I have two first level, two third level, two fourth level, two fifth level, and one seventh level spell slot remaining. This is burn time. And uh, both charges on the channel divinity. This encounter is a dragon. The adult white dragon that you see before you has a relatively high natural armor of 18. It can burrow for 30, it can fly for 80, it can swim for 40. They have a passive perception of 21 and blind sight of 60 feet, so the rogue's going to be somewhat challenged in this. They have multi-attack, so they can use their frightful presence and then make three attacks, one with a bite and two with its claws. As you might imagine, they have bites and they have claws. The bite does cold damage in addition to regular damage. They have a tail attack that they can use. Frightful presence impacts things within 120 feet, and it's a DC 14 wisdom save versus the frightened condition. They have cold breath, as dragons are known to do. They can breathe on you and do elemental damage. This creature has legendary actions. It can take three legendary actions, choosing from one of its options. Legendary actions can be used at the end of opponent's turns. Those are detect, it can do tail attacks, and it can do a wing attack, but a wing attack costs it two of its actions. This encounter has lair actions. At initiative 20, the dragon Dragon takes a lair action to cause one of the following effects. Freezing fog fills the area, jagged ice shards fall from the ceiling, or the dragon creates an opaque wall of ice on solid surface. It has immunity to cold. Terrain. There's a couple of trees and difficult terrain for people to hide behind if they want to. There's a couple of things to hide behind inside as well. Otherwise, there's a cave lair in here. The jagged ice can only fall inside because that doesn't make any sense for it to fall outside tactics for this fight. What do you guys think? Burn them. Yep. Face check. We've got some spell slots. We use up what we can. This is going to be a burn fight, I think. Definitely keep away from that breath so spread out. Don't clump up. Yeah. Cleric, what do you have to concentrate with? A spirit guardian, I think is the only one. Yeah, I didn't know if giving you a scroll of haste and having you use it would be worth it. Cleric can't cast scroll of haste. That's right, never mind. It's not a cleric spell. I'm thinking sorcerer. If there's no other thoughts about it, let's go ahead and roll initiative. Anybody up higher than a 20? The lair action goes on a 20. Anybody have between a 20 and a 15? 17 for the cleric. 17 for the wizard. 17 for the rogue. Who's got between a 15 and a 10? 14 for the fighter. 12 on the owl. The dragon has a 10. Snake has a 3. First thing that happens is a lair action. 20 foot radius freezing fog appears within 120 feet. Each creature in the fog, when it appears, which is everybody, make a DC 10 constitution save. Oh no. You're good at these. I rolled a nat one. Oh, indomitable? Wait, you are that good at these. What's your total? 11. That'll pass. All right. It's 10 damage or five on a success. Tell me about it, Blind Oracle. A six for a fail. So that's 10 damage. It's cold damage though? Correct. So I have boots, which will give me resistance to cold, so I'll take five. Train. With the resistance, round down. So it's two damage. Asia Wolf. 16 on the first save, 15 for the con. Part of that's going to the cleric, right? Cleric, you got a warding bond on him? Yeah. You each take two. Snake. Snake pass was an 18. It's going to take five. The owl. He's going to freeze. Longfish. Cleric got an 11. That's the lair action. After the lair, we go to the cleric. Run me towards the northwest? It's actually still in the cold because of the way that radii work. How about one further up? You're going to dash? Yeah. Can you dash me under the other tree? Bonus action, nothing. 
ordered the snake to move north. After that, we're going to go to the wizard. Fly up. I'm assuming I can see through this cold thing. You are assuming incorrectly. You cannot see through the cold. It is heavily obscured. Good thing I'm flying out of it. I'm 60 up and he is inside the cave, right? Yes. Not con on anything else, so that's going to be a dodge. After that, we're going to go to the blind oracle. We're going to fly out of the fog. 40 feet to the west, directly towards the dragon. Action, use the bardic instrument to cast fairy fire on the dragon. Ooh, sexy. It's a DC 13. He's going to fail. Any creature in the area when the spell is cast is also outlined. For the duration of one minute, any attack roll against an affected creature or object has advantage if the attacker can see it, and the affected creature or object can't benefit from being invisible. Now I should have 20 feet from my original move left, so we're going to go 20 feet up, and then we're going to take the dash action, go another 60 feet up, so a total of 80 feet up. I was really hoping I could get you to burn legendary resistance on a cheap fairy fire. It wasn't a tactical maneuver. I literally forgot about it. <laughs> but now that I'm thinking about it, like, nah, I just did it. After the blind oracle is the train. Move west, which was the direction I last saw the dragon. Prepare an attack in case it comes anywhere near me. After the train is the snake. Snake's gonna move north and should be able to hide behind the big tree just outside the cone. That's still technically within because of the way radii work. It's going to take eight points of damage. If I dash, I should be able to get... Because of the size of the snake, pretty much everything here is difficult terrain for it. Never mind. After that, we're going to go to the dragon. Dragon is going to try to breathe. Dragon has a 60-foot cone, which is going to clip Cleric and the fighter. So it's going to go there and then breathe. Both of you give me DC 19 constitution saves. 61 or 30 if you passed. 21. 17. Train, you're going to bump a 61 down to a 30, and then you have cold resistance, so you're going to bump a 30 down to a... 15. After the dragon, we're going to go to... The dragon creates an opaque wall of ice on a solid surface. It can see within 120 feet. The wall can be up to 30 feet long, 30 feet high, and 1 foot thick. This is going to disappear, and instead we're going to get a wall that we're going to erect in front of the cleric. That's the lair action. After the lair action is the longfish. So I have to walk around it. Direct east... I have a lot of stuff. Still in Guiding Bolt range, so I'm going to chuck another level 1 Guiding Bolt at it. You have advantage on this attack roll. Hey, Crit! 8d6 for 36 damage. That's me. After the Longfish, we go to the Major Wolf. Move to where I can get him in my sight. So I think I have to fly down a little bit. Yep. The Magic Missile's coming his way. Upcast, third level. I'm looking at a 1. Boo. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 5 is 7, 5 times 7 is 35 points of damage. And fly back up. After the Azure Wolf is the Blind Oracle. Move down 60, shoot the dragon. Advantage for the Fairy Fire. Yep. This is a 29 hit. 29 hits. 34 points of damage. So that's a move action, a standard. Take the dash action to go the 60 feet back up. I feel like the shy guy from Mario Brothers. Train wreck. I don't think I can make that. Just gonna move. Could dash action surge to get in contact if you wanted to. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's go. Let's dash. And remember, you have advantage on all of this. First one was 18 on the dice, plus 12. Hits. 12 damage. Second attack is 18. 18 hits. For 17 damage. And third attack, 25. Yep. Two on the dice, re rolling. 11 damage. At the end of your turn, it's going to use its legendary action to do a wing attack against you. Dragon beats its wings. Each creature within 10 feet of the dragon must make a DC 19 dexterity save. Go ahead and do that for me, Train. 15. Failure. Go ahead and take 11 points of bludgeoning damage and you are knocked prone. I currently have 69 points of damage on me in total. And then the dragon can move up to half its flying speed. Snake. Snake is going to dash me south, southwest. At the end of the snake's turn, the dragon is going to take another legendary action to do a tail attack against train wrecks. Advantage because you're prone. Doesn't help that much though. 18 to hit you. 18 does not hit. Now it's the dragon's actual turn. Dragon is going to move 80 feet, flying away from the prone fighter. Fighter, you can take an opportunity attack if you wish. I do. Disadvantage because you're prone. Cancelled out because of fairy fire. 18 to hit total. 18 is what you need. 12 damage. Fairy fire dragon is going to fly 80 feet towards the rogue and it's going to do its 
frightful presence. Every creature within 120 feet of the dragon and aware of it must make a DC 12 wisdom save. That's everybody here. Hero's Feast. <laughs> that was close. Hero's Feast. You guys are immune to the frightened condition. The snake is not immune to it. Snake did not eat. Okay, snake needs to <laughs> So give me a DC 14 wisdom save. Roll a 19. Let me see if I have a... If you have a negative 6 to wisdom, you don't have a negative 6 to wisdom? Okay. Then it is immune to dragon fear for the next 24 hours. The dragon is going to try to recharge its breath. Fails to do so. The dragon is now going to chow down on some halfling. Okay. Or at least it's going to try. Bite attack. 17 to hit you. On the nose. Sorry, halfling. 17 points of piercing damage and 7 points of cold damage for a total of 24 points of damage on that attack. We're going to use our reaction to half this. So you're going to half it down to 12? Yes. And then we'll half the cold damage again because of resistance. So the 7 goes to a 3 and the 3 goes to a 1. So you can take 10 instead. Exactly what I was going for. Oh, you a con save. 10 on the button. That's what you needed. Then a claw attack. 26 to hit. That'll hit. Take 10 slashing and a concentration save. Looking for a 10. Getting a 13. That'll do it. 18 to hit. Hits. Minimum damage of 8 slashing. Constitution check. Halfling luck kicks in. Oh. Save with a 13. That's my actions. After the dragon, we're going to go to the lair action. The lair action is going to be to pop fog in this circle here. We're going to do it 80 feet up in the air. It is heavily obscured. Go ahead and give me a DC 10 constitution save. Pass with an 18. Great. You're going to take 12 cut to... 6 cut to 3. And a concentration save. Hunting that fairy fire. I am. I should have resisted it in the beginning. Told you. Con save 23. After that, uh, we're going to go to the long fish. Burn them. Let's chuck a level 5 guiding bolt at the dragon. Disadvantage because you can't see it. Advantage because it has fairy fire. 13 plus 10, 23. 23 hits. 30 damage. And advantage to the next person. With bonus action, I am actually going to revert the snake back. That's it for me. Legendary action at the end of Longfish's turn. It's going to use its legendary action to do a wing attack. Give me a DC 19 dexterity save, Mr. Rogue. Sure. Ooh, a 12. That'll fail. So go ahead and take 17 points of bludgeoning damage. You are knocked prone, which means nothing in this case. And I can fly up to half my flying speed, but I like my little bubble. So I'm going to stay in it. 17 for the con save. Cool. After the long fish is the Asia wolf. He is obscured. Even if I fly up, I wouldn't be able to see him. But he also can't see you. You can still see him. He's outlined in bright light. Like, he, he exists as a concept for you. You can detect him, but you cannot see him. Those are different. My spell requires C. That's the big part here. But let's fly up some more. What else is there to do right now? And then dodge. After the Azure Wolf, we're going to do a legendary action to tail attack the rogue. You can't see me, so I have advantage. I can't see you, so I have a disadvantage. They cancel out. That's a 23 to hit you. No, you can see me because you have blind sight. Yeah. No, it doesn't do me any better, though. It's just a straight up 23 to hit you. That hits. A 17 points of bludgeoning damage. Concentration save. Which I fail. You are no longer fairy fired. You worked for that one. I did. I'm also going to eat a rogue while I'm here. Taking so much damage. Like, I have outtanked the fighter in this encounter by a long shot. Yep. After that, we're going to go to the blind oracle. I have to stand up for half my movement. Rules is written. Disengage as a bonus action. Fly with my remaining 30 feet out of the circle towards the cleric. Man, dragons suck for rogues. Mm-hmm. Dash action to go behind the fighter. After that, we're going to go to train wrecks. The last I saw the dragon is in the air, correct? Yeah, you know where it is. You can detect its position. You just can't see it. But I could not reach it if it's in the air. Wait, what's the distance on javelins? Short range is 30, 120 for disadvantage. You got disadvantage anyway, so it's not going to do anything different. So I'm going to throw a javelin. Guiding bolt cancels the disadvantage. It can't see you, so that cancels the disadvantage also. So that's 14 to hit. 14's a miss. Clatters off the scales. All right. After the train is the dragon. Dragon is going to recharge its breath, or at least attempt to do so. It's going to fail to do so, so I can kill a rogue, I think. You should be able to kill me this turn. I just got to get to you. Oh no. Flying over the top of the fighter so that we don't provoke an opportunity attack. First one is going to be a bite attack. 15 to hit you. Miss. Second one's a claw attack. 14 to hit you. Miss. 
And then the last one is a 16 to hit you. I got a three, a four, and a five. That will miss. No, you can't kill a rogue this turn. That's a dragon. After the dragon is the lair action. The lair action we're going to do here is to create a wall. Yeah. <laughs> wall me in. Yeah, we'll just take one of you at a time. After that, we're going to go to the longfish. Move me as close towards the fighter as possible. So the wall completely blocks line of sight. It's an opaque wall of ice. Yes. Yeah, no good action. After that, we're going to go to the legendary action of the dragon. Dragon's going to tail attack the rogue hopefully we do better than last time there it is 25 to hit that hits 13 points of bludgeoning damage we'll use our reaction to half that yep asia wolf drop down 30 and fly 30 towards the cave dodge after the asia wolf is the legendary action and we're going to do another tail attack 25 to hit you yeah that hits take 11 points of bludgeoning and then it is the blind oracle's turn so is the wall completely blocking the entrance at this point yes it is it is completely blocking it we are going to disengage can I move through the gap in the south side of the wall through his square? And I'm flying, so... Oh, you got forever. Yeah. Hill count is difficult to write, but nothing else should. Yeah, that's right. Action. Use a scroll of haste on myself. Last action from haste. Dash back another 60. You actually have 120 feet of movement at that point, so you went all the way to the edge. Sure. That's silly. That's how that works, though. Then I would get a legendary action. Can't fight you guys, though. You could fight your own wall. I could fight my own wall. Train wrecks. Is the dragon in the air? The dragon is not. The dragon landed on the ground. You're prone, I believe, right? You know what? Yep, I am. Stand up from prone? Yep, and that's half my move. Yep. I'm going to move to the edge of that wall. A lot of difficult terrain there. It's as far as you can get with a regular move. You can dash if you want. No. Just splitting up a little bit to spread out dodge. And then it goes to the dragon. Dragon is going to try to recharge breath. Man, something's wrong with this dragon's breath. We will ready an action to attack when the wall comes down. Then we're gonna go to the wall's turn, the lair action. The lair action will be jagged ice shards fall from the ceiling, striking up to three creatures. So that will be the cleric and the fighter. It's a plus seven to hit you. Cleric, that's an 18. No miss. Fighter, that's 22. Hits. Take five points of piercing damage. Well, that wasn't nearly as good. The dragon is gonna use its readied action to make a tail attack against the fighter. 28 to hit a fighter. Yep. Take 15 points of bludgeoning damage. And after that, we're going to go to the longfish. I'm not in his reach, right? Correct. You are not currently in his reach. All right. Move east five squares. And I am going to throw a scroll of harm at the dragon. Improvised weapon attack for throwing a scroll. Harm is a constitution saving throw at DC 18. Takes 14 D6 necrotic damage. Plus 11 for his constitution. So he's going to pass. 44, half to 22. On the end of your turn, it's going to take a legendary action. Wing attack. The dragon beats its wings. Creature within 10 feet of it must make a DC 19 dexterity save. That's you, fighter. All right. That is a 15 on the dice. So that's a failure. You're going to take 16 points of bludgeoning damage and be knocked prone. The dragon can then move up to half its flying speed. It's going to move here. After that, we're going to go to the Asia Wolf. Yay! This is about the best option here, doing the math. Magic Missile, level 5. 3 on the dice. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 times 7 is 63. So it's going to take 63 points of damage and drop. Yay! Ooh. And that was the dragon encounter. We did it! Oofed. You have cleared out the dragon slayer, and you're going to collect all of the loot that the dragon has collected. You're going to get 42,000 gold, which is a 10,500 gold split. In addition, in the horde, you find a belt of hill giant strength, a short bow plus two, a spell scroll of reverse gravity, and a spell scroll of resurrection. The assumption, although this is not required, is that the belt goes to the fighter, the short bow goes to the rogue, the reverse gravity goes to the wizard, and the resurrection goes to the cleric. But if you guys have other ideas, I'm willing to hear them. The next dungeon for these adventures is going to be a Beholder Cavern, which I think is going to be interesting. Another lair fight and probably some legendary actions. So we're going to head back underground to see what the Beholder has collected. The adventurers have defeated the dragon on the top of the mountain, so that's the final encounter. The players will now level up to level 14 and move on to the next dungeon. Next week, I'll release a video with all six encounters from the White Dragon Mountain, and we'll talk about the particular challenges of the different encounters. Thank you for stopping by. I'm Saracen Zero, and I will see you next time.